Hey, what's up, guys? So I'm practicing some linear... I never finished my linear algebra class, so I need to like study a ton and take like two tests within the next week. So, <laughs> gotta review. So, I'm trying to find the the, the determinant of uh of this matrix. I'm probably going to be studying like for 10 hours straight. So, I hope you guys are prepared. <laughs> Lori can leave. I know math can be boring for some people, but I don't know. For me, it's kind of relaxing. Solving a math problem is kind of like figuring out your opponent in Puyo Puyo. It's totally the same thing, right? Also, I'm trying to work on some... on a image recognition tool for Puyo. And I think linear algebra would be really useful to know. Depending on how complicated I want to get. That's in the far future though. For now, I have to learn the basics. Okay, well first... There's multiple ways to solve the determinant, but I think my math book wants me to solve it by using row operations. So the goal is to get the matrix into row echelon form so I can just take the determinant of a triangular matrix which is a lot easier to compute. So... Calculus? Well, I'll be doing that later. For now, I need to work on this algebra. What can make this... I kind of want this music to sound more interesting. What can I do? Tempo shift? Wah wah filter? What the heck is this? What is this? Wow, that sounds terrible. Oh, that's so disgusting. Wait, I should be doing homework, huh? Ooh, what's this? Tremolo. What? That didn't do anything. Phaser, what is this? LFO frequency. Did I just... Wow, that sounded weird. Ooh, echo? An echo filter? What is this? Oh. Oh, an echo! <laughs> Wait, I'm getting distracted. Oh, this always happens to me when I do homework. Wait.
What program is this? What do you mean? The music? <laughs> Just one note. Yeah. Okay. Row operations. God, I hate this. Okay. If I swap two rows, the determinant of the matrix becomes the opposite sign. Right? Then... Subtract the first row from the second row. That doesn't change any signs. Wait, subtract twice the first row from this. Hmm. So this is zero, negative seven, negative five. Add six times the first row to the third row. Zero. 18 plus 3 is 21. 12 plus 3 is 15. All right. I think I could pull out 3 from the bottom row, so... Negative three. So how's everyone doing this weekend? What's 15 divided by three? Five? Hey, wait. If the determinant, if two rows are just multiples of each other, doesn't that mean that the determinant is zero? I remember there being some rule like that. Yeah, if there's a whole row of zeros. Then the determinant is just zero, right? Right? Did I do this right? Huh? This is linear algebra. <laughs> okay, let me go check this. Wolf from Alpha is my favorite site in the world. I like it even more than Puyo Nexus. Because I don't know how I would have survived math in, like, school without this. <laughs> Terminate. Two... Negative one, negative one. One, three, two... Negative six, negative six. Alright, it's zero! Okay, cool! <sighs> I didn't have to solve the whole problem. Okay, next one. You know, it always bothers me slightly how people 
kind of think math is useless. But as I've gone more and more into all this gaming stuff, math or in like creative things, math is like everywhere. It's so annoying. Like, have we ever given thought to how like Photoshop draws, how you can draw a curved line in a computer program? It's actually doing some crazy math based on like, I don't know, like, how do they do it? It gets five points and calculates some sort of angle or whatever. I don't know. But unless you study, I think you kind of take it for granted how much math supports everything that makes your life convenient. Okay, have to, I have to determine the, the, the determinant for this matrix, so... Calculating the, 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 the determinant is getting kind of boring, maybe I should skip to something more interesting. Okay, well, let me solve this one at least. getting other people to do your math homework. How do you solve this problem? Well, have you seen, have you learned matrices in math yet? Basically, okay, so... Some math things are structured as like a matrix, right? Or like, I don't know. Say like an image file, for example. Basically, each pixel of an image is coded as a square. And each square has its own like RGB A value or whatever kind of encoding it uses. BGRA, I don't know, CYMK. But the way transformations are applied to that or through matrix math. And so learning the basics of matrix math helps a lot. So anyways, sometimes you're given this a, as like some sort of equation or whatever. And to solve it, you have to just apply a bunch of... I don't know. I'm no expert at this either, so... <laughs> It's not the trigonometry. Well, trigonometry is so nice too. Okay, I need to stop slacking. How do I even start on this one? This is so annoying. Will I end up with fractions in this matrix? Ugh. I hate this. Oh my god, I don't want to do this. Here, let's try this then. Swap the two rows. Then... Subtract the second row from the first row. Well, for anyone else that's still in school, like, you have, you've had to solve, like, systems of equations before, right? Like, this, or, I don't know, something like this. Well, you can actually write this as, like, a matrix like this, and solve for an x and y that way. Like, you take the coefficients here, 
Actually, you can also add in this. So then as you apply matrix transformations and stuff to it, you eventually get like, I don't know. So like x equals some number, y here equals some number. Like that's x and that's y. And this is what they're equal to. But that's how it's used for, and that's kind of how computers do math like that too, I think. So wait, okay, 5 minus 4 is 1, 4 minus 3 is 1, 1 minus negative 2 is 3, okay. Uh... Is it okay for me to use the first row to then perform operations on the second one? Is that okay? Well, how about this? I'll add twice the third row to the second row so one one three four. wait okay negative four plus four is zero six plus three is nine eight plus negative two is six add twice the first row to the third row so that's zero 2 plus 3 is 5, 6 plus 4 is 10. Uh, then I can factor out some numbers. So the third, the second row is divisible by 3, and the third row is divisible by 5. So then. Let me swap rows again. Because I want all ones in the main diagonal. Or at least most of the ones. It's troublesome if they're not. So then, the third row, three times the second row. Subtract that from the third row. So, so wait, well, 15 times, okay, 3 minus 3 is 0, 2 minus 6 is negative 4, so 15, So now that I have this in triangular form, I only need to multiply these three numbers to get the determinant. So here it's negative 4, right? Wait, 15 times negative 4 is this. Okay, time to look this up. I hope I didn't make a mistake anywhere. negative 60. Oh, I did it right! Yes! History was your thing. Oh, I loved history. 
I actually got a 5 on the AP US History exam. I was pretty proud of myself. Because if you would ask me now about anything in US history, I would know nothing. And I think when I was taking the class, I didn't really pay attention at all either. I was just really good at reading the, reading the test questions and guessing the right answer. <laughs> I didn't actually know anything. I feel so bad. I don't know. I realized I lived my entire life being way too lazy. Like. Instead of actually studying for exams, I would just like think about how to tackle the, the wording of the test questions and produce the right answer that way. And do like the minimal amount of studying required so I would have more time to play Puyo and other video games. But now I'm starting to realize that all my laziness is catching up to me and I actually don't know how to do anything. So... It's time to change that about myself and actually work hard for once. Okay, let me see. Properties of determinants. One second, I need to look up my class syllabus real quick. What? Linear Algebra. I never got around to actually finishing this class, but I need to do it now since I'm applying for uh, statistics programs. Okay, well, the general instructions for the next set of problems are find the determinant of A, the determinant of matrix B, A times B, and then the, the, the determinant of A times B. Verify the determinants computed separately are the same as the determinant of the multiplied matrix. Oh, do I really want to listen to this while I'm studying? Huh? Just do a 4 wide. Unfortunately, 4 wides don't work in real life problems. It's not a solution to everything like it is in Tetris. Okay. But yeah, every day I look in the mirror and think to myself that I have no work ethic. So for once, I'm gonna actually study hard for a math class. Okay, the determinant of A, well that's easy, so...
Can you guys see my tiny handwriting? Do you guys care? Okay, well, whatever. 4 minus 4 equals 0. Oh. So... Okay, then what's B? 1, 1, 0, negative 1. Negative 1. Minus 0. Okay. I did what it asked me to. Now what's A times B? Oh, I hate matrix multiplication. It's so tedious and I always screw up. Like get my fingers onto this so just so like I don't mess up. Okay, wait. Uh, negative two plus zero. Negative two minus one. Four plus zero. Four plus two. Right. That's A times B. The last step is to calculate the determinant of this. Okay. Well, I'll be doing calculus later. You need to know some linear algebra for differential equations. Apparently. You hate matrices with a passion, why? I mean, I kind of hate them too because it's, it's so easy just to make one mistake somewhere and then everything else is wrong. But at this point, I've come to accept that that's pretty much how it is for everything in higher level math. You have to practice a lot just to be perfect, so those little mistakes don't destroy you from the very beginning. I've always been bad at math because my mentality towards life is just to do like the threshold of what's, of what's required of me and be lazy, but that's not gonna cut it anymore. Oh, that's zero. Cool. So, zero equals zero, right? Because A times B... Like that's zero, negative one, equals zero. Okay, cool. Alright, next problem. What's Ringo's backstory? Huh? She's part of the physics club. And physics requires lots of math, as you can guess. I actually really liked it. So, a lot of, so at my, when I was in college, my college offered two types of physics classes. There was a physics class without, with no calculus, and the physics class with calculus. So everyone, they took the physics class without calculus, like all my like pre-med friends, they took the algebra physics because they were scared that the physics, the calc-based physics was too hard. But it turned out that like 
learning physics without calculus was actually tremendously annoying and difficult. <laughs> because like one of the first things they teach you in calc-based physics is that like the equations for like position, speed, and acceleration, they're actually just like derivatives of each other. So you can always figure it out that way as long as you have memorized like one equation. But then like my friends in the algebra physics class, they were memorizing like a hundred bajillion things. I felt so bad for them. It was so stressful when if you would just like learn like the true basics, you could get away with just memorizing very little. What did I do in college? Chemistry. And I'm not I'm not doing any chemistry now at all. I don't know. I was a chemistry major because my friends were. I didn't really think that hard about it. I have regrets. Huh? The way I describe math sounds like Puyo. Practice the loss so the tiny mistakes don't mess you up. That's true. When you play Puyo, you have to like think about every single little thing. Like how does this one placement affect everything else in the future? That's how it is in math too, because it's so easy to destroy your entire hour of effort because you wrote a coefficient wrong. So everything else is wrong. <sighs> Sorry, math gives me a little bit of anxiety, but the good kind, like try harder. Computer engineering and you did three years of computer engineering and dropped out. I can vectors. I wouldn't really know how to do that. <laughs> I mean, I'm supposed to be reviewing that too, but I'm not sure if I'm confident at showing it on stream yet. Okay, let me solve this problem and then I'll go to the next chapter. I'm pretty sure I understand determinant properties. Basically, the whole point of the, of the determinant is just that. If it's non-zero, that means you have an invertible uh, matrix, and invertible matrices have solutions. So that's really what all this effort is for. You know what? Screw this. I don't care. I hope I don't mess up on my exam tomorrow. <laughs> okay, what is the next relevant thing? I'll just hope I can like know all this. Vector operations. Okay. I don't know. I'm so bad. Like, I get bored easily. Okay. Uh... So it says, find the sum of the vectors and illustrate the sum geometrically. Does that mean draw a graph? I hate that. <sighs> well. Wait, is this, this is so basic? So you just add up the components, right? U plus V is just... Three, one. Yeah, right? Okay, skip the easy problems. <laughs> so when I was in middle school, my math teacher was like really angry at me because like, I would always get terrible grades on the easy stuff, but then do a lot better on the hard things just because I was like more motivated to figure it out. So like my grades are kind of like, semi-awful because <laughs> I don't know I hate myself let's just leave it at that
But at the end of the day though, my parents gave me like some ultimatum was like, well, if you don't get perfect scores and everything, then you're not getting any money for your birthday. So I started taking everything seriously until I got to college where my parents stopped caring. So then I stopped caring. Kind of bad, huh? Going through life without intrinsic motivation. I don't want to do this easy stuff. Oh my gosh. Okay, wait. Vector spaces. Huh. Okay, well, I know I have to take this seriously because this is like some conceptual stuff, right? Okay. Wait, this is so dumb. Okay, wait. Subspaces of vector spaces. Sorry, I'm not, there's nothing interesting going on the screen right now, but I'm like reading through my book. We just copyrighted, so I can't show it on stream. Just saying. So we're reading subspaces. Cool. Wait, how do you do this again? I don't remember. Wait, this is a weird question. Okay. It says... W equals... So that theory always trips me out because I'm too lazy to really care about it. So are power, or what is it like, sums? I remember when we were learning in basic calculus how to compute the limits, whatever, with like, uh, with power series, and I was just like, this is so boring. It's so easy to screw up, I hate it so much. Here I am, a failure in life. So it says, verify that W is a subspace of V. In each case, assume that V has the standard operations. I'm not actually sure what this is asking of me. It's a subspace if it's linearly dependent or something. Okay, let me just like, Look up the answer to this problem so I like actually understand what it's asking of me and then I'll do another similar one. Show that W is a subspace of V, take any two elements in W, it shows that for scalars that they can form a linear combination. Oh. What? Oh, I see. Okay, then let's try this one. So we can show that there's two different types of matrices in the set that you could write as a linear combination of each other, then... Okay, I think I can get this. 
So W is the set of all two by two matrices of the form First year uni college STEM math. I didn't learn this in my first year of being a chemistry major. <laughs> I guess I'm a failure. Or maybe my school failed me, huh? I should blame the institution. Instead of my own lack of initiative. You know, as I reflect on my life growing up, I realize... Becoming successful when you come from a disadvantaged upbringing, part of it is your institution, part of it is just like your own willingness to go out of your way to research things you want. Your own. Okay, wait. Now's not the time for that. Let's see. V equals um two two. Well, I mean... Right? Isn't this obvious? Like, whatever number you choose for A and B... You can always just like... Like if... You have one matrix that's this, and another matrix that's this... Then the second one is just... That. <laughs> okay, let's get these theory ones. I hate it. I'd rather solve like stuff. Seven. No, that's a boring one. That's boring. Standard operations, what are those? Are there rules for... Oh. I was supposed to be paying attention to this the whole time. Wait, what? I'm so confused. So wait. Okay, let's try this. W equals... X1 X2 
X1, X2. X and 1 are real numbers. X1 and X2 are real numbers. What's the notation for real numbers or whatever? Is it that? I don't even know. Okay. Uh. So I guess just do a test thing like... say the vector x is 1 1 1 then a multiple of that could be like 2x right but then that doesn't satisfy this part right here only this would have to be this, so then this isn't a subspace of R3. Oh, I hate the subspace stuff. If, we, if I get tested on it, I'll just accept that I'll get the question wrong. I don't care anymore. It's... It's a test if W is part of a subspace of R3. I give up though. I don't like this. Okay, here we go. Spanning sets and linear independence. I think this is interesting. Uh... about finding linear combinations. Wait. Okay, let's do some practice ones. Oh. Okay, write each vector as a linear combination of the vectors in S, if possible. So, S equals... 2, negative 1, 3... So let's so uh, so the first one to try is z equals negative one negative two two So basically it's asking me to do like what coefficient times This right. How do I solve this?
I see, okay. This is what I need soul for. Do I really need to do matrix math for this? Seems pretty straightforward, right? A equals two. And then, what, six plus Four B equals two. Right. So Is that how I'm supposed to write the answer? Does it have anything to do with Puyo Puyo meaning squishy? Uh, not really. Okay, now it wants me to try it for... Oh, fractions, I hate that. Okay, skip this one. That would just be... the same thing all over again. <sighs> Too lazy to do that. Okay. Am I allowed to use calculators? Nope, you're not. No calculators. Sad life, huh? Okay, this is an interesting problem. Determine whether the given matrix is a linear combination of A and B. So... How do we go about this? How do you do this? There's just some way to write this as...
as one matrix to solve for it? How do you do this? Huh. Oh, do you just solve it one by one? I'm just like, how hard do you need to prove, like... I'm just wondering how much work I have to do because I'm lazy. How much is required to solve this problem? Oh, okay. Wait, I think I understand it now. Thank you. Ah, uh, JX. Linear combinations. Ah, uh, well, this is in calculus, first of all. But calculus is also super useful for bypassing a lot of the memorization that's forced on you in typical math classes. Like, when I finally learned that volume was like the integral of surface area. It like blew my mind. I'm just like, why didn't they teach us this in elementary school so we didn't have to like go through all the effort on the BS memorization of like the volume for like six different types of objects. Like screw that. You could have figured it out with calculus. I hate memorizing things. Okie dokie. So basically it's asking to do... So let's say my scalars are like x and y, right? So then... Two x plus zero y equals negative two. Negative three x plus five y equals twenty eight. Four x plus y equals one. Negative eleven. Negative eleven x plus minus two y equals. Okay. Did I write? Did I write this correctly? Huh. Wait a second. Is it x just negative one? And y equals zero? Wait, it can't be right. No, no, I'm just kidding. Did it do this correctly? <laughs> but wait, determine whether the given matrix is a linear. Com this doesn't work. Because for these two... Well, it's not a linear combination. But x minus 2y equals negative 11. Uh, what? Where? Wait. Probably a brute force method. Let me check if I wrote this all correctly. I hate this. Make the two. Oh crap, I did. I'm such an idiot. I hate everything. Thanks. 
Well, from this first one, we would find that x equals negative 1. But then if you tried it in one of the other ones, you would get... y equals 5. It's a whole tree for this one. Negative 1 minus... Yeah, that's a negative 11. Then... Okay. But wait though. This, did I write this correctly? Negative three times. Thirty fifteen plus twenty five. It's not twenty eight though. Or is it? Have I been wrong my entire life about negative 15 plus 25? Something about math makes me feel always like not confident ever. Copy something down wrong. Why did I do 5 twice? This is negative 1. <laughs> oh my god. See what I'm talking about? I'm such an idiot. It does equal 28. <laughs> this is why I'm bad at math. I'm so careless. Just like how I play Puyo. Carelessly. Okay, so the instructions for these say determine whether set s spans r squared or r2, r2. sorry I'm dumb, wait Okay, so... What's the definition of a spanning set? I already forgot, even though I studied this the other day. Negative one, two... Well, is it... If it can be... If there's a way to write the two vectors... Like, if they're linearly independent, right? Something like that? If every vector in a vector space can be written as a linear combination of vectors in set S, then S is called a spanning set of the vector space. Oh, I see. So what I have to do here is I see. Okay. 
Determine whether the set S spans R squared. Okay, I'm like reading an example in the book. Yeah, as if they're linearly independent, right? So wait. A set of vectors in a vector space is called is linearly independent where the vector equation only has the trivial solution. Well, for this one, I don't think you have to do like the whole linear independence testing. You just need to determine whether, like, so like, for any vector in R R two, it's written like that. So that equals. So that's to a So then you just have to determine whether this coefficient matrix right here has a deter like a non-zero determinant. If it does, that that means it does span it because there's a solution for every vector. But if it doesn't, then it's not a sub. It's not a spanning set. Well, that's easy. So four plus one equals five. So this is a uh, spanning set. What book am I using? I'm using Elementary Linear Algebra by Ron Larson. So wait, does spanning and being literally independent mean the same thing? Does it? Wow. Well, oh. Okay. Let's not go jump to the assumptions then. I'll just take it one at a time then. What's my range given these vectors? Oh. Okay, well. Okay, next problem. Let's do
Ooh, oh my god. I'm getting really tired. I need like cup noodles so badly. I'm hungry. Wait, what am I doing? Oh wait. 5a plus 5b equals v1 What's the determinant of this? Negative 20 minus 5, wait, minus 0. So this does span. <sighs> that's it, I only get one vector. And that's supposed to span all of R2. I mean, just one vector, you can do anything to this to make anything in R2, right? Wait, no you can't. Right, so... Oh, that's true. This looks mathematically wrong, right? Or... This could have so many different solutions. Or not. Yeah, this can't say... You can't make, yeah. But then it says, if it doesn't span R2, give a geometric description of the subspace that it does span. How do I even begin to describe that? Wait, you always need at least n vectors to span R2. So what space does this actually do? R1? Is that what this is? I don't know what how to give a geometric description. Oh what is this? I'll feel your notifications in Action Center while your screen is duplicated. What the heck is this? Lenovo Vantage. Garbage. What was I doing? Oh, right. Draw the vector negative three, five on a graph. Multiply s by arbitrary numbers. So that would be something like. Well, if you multiply it by arbitrary numbers, then you just get. A longer line this oh oh so geometrically it's describing just a line oh 
<laughs> okay. Oh, wow, mind blown. Set theory is going to ruin me in the future. Just saying. vectors. Oh, I like vaguely remember it from multivariable calculus. And I think that was taught in this book too, but I skipped over it because I was lazy. As you can see, that's a recurring problem with me. <laughs> okay. Kind of weird, isn't it? Now, don't we have like too many vectors? Do you really need all three? Well, wait, let's not get ahead of ourselves. A Well, I guess you can have extra ones, right? A standing side can have more vectors than is necessary. Oh! Huh? I have the 7th edition of the book. What is this? Page... I don't know what this is actually. One seventy eight. <laughs> so wait. How do we even begin to like s show that to determine whether this spans R2? Like it probably does, right? Since you have all the extra terms. Did I even write this correctly? I have is one negative two four three negative six. Huh? Hey, isn't this? Isn't it just that? So what does this mean? The song? It's Memories of Puyo Puyo. It's also the password theme in Doctor Robotics Mean Bee Machine. S2 is... S negative S one. 
Oh. Linearly dependent, so... Well, I'm not actually sure how you see... So, like, I could see that, but then how do I word the, the answer to, like, does it span R2 or not? And what does it look geometrically? some stuff in the book. Oh, S does not span R2 because it doesn't have two linearly independent vectors. Oh, true. I see clearly now. Band's line described by arbitrary multiples of one, three. Oh, okay, thank you. Let's see. Okay. Okay, this problem says... Test whether the set S is linearly independent or linearly dependent. this again? Lin testing for linearly... Okay, well I can definitely tell that the, th the third one is linearly independent, right? Well, but there's a mathematical way to show it besides just looking at it, right? Oh, I see. I see. You add up multiples of each vector, set it to zero, and see if it only has the trivial solution. I see, I remember now, I remember doing this. A homogeneous system of linear okay. So then what you have to do is...
Wait. Sorry, I'm getting so confused right now. There's just so many numbers on this screen. I'm like scared I'm writing this wrong. Oh, wait. Okay, 4, negative 3, 4, 1, negative 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, How do we begin with this? Should I like swap rows or something? I'm always wondering whether like I always feel like I never swap the rows properly to make the problem easier for myself. I always do something stupidly hard. Whatever. I don't care anymore. I'm just gonna Do I have to deal with fractions? I'm so annoyed. Wait. Let me swap these heroes. Wait a second, no. Subtract the second row from the first row, right? So one plus two is three. Sorry, I'm really bad at this. I'm being really slow. Subtract three times the first row from the second row, so... Negative two minus nine.
0 minus 18. This is right. Well, what have I done? I don't know what I'm doing. Wait, multiply the last row until I don't have fractions anymore. What does that mean? Okay, what is this going to be really annoying and look like? 1, negative 3, negative 6, 18, 11. Multiply row through by 11 and then subtract. Oh. Oh. Wow. Hmm. Wow, you just opened up a whole new world for me. I've been struggling with these fractions the entire time. Okay. All right. Gonna need the negative signs there. So at forty-four times sixty-six. So then this is. I see what you mean. This is easier. So what's 66 minus 18 times 4? Oh my god. Here I am carrying my numbers because I suck. What's 66 minus 72? Uh, 
Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. Right? Done. So that's six. Subtract three times the third row from the second row to so just get that. Subtract negative one times the third per add. Subtract whatever. This becomes zero. Right? Oh, well, at some point this will just become zero too, so yeah, that's linearly dependent, huh? I don't need to go any further than the six matrix I wrote. You mean this one? So wait, Kitch, would you also be able to test linear independence by getting the determinant? Last column, all oh, right, by expansion, right? It, the, the determinant of the entire matrix would just be. What is that? Negative nine minus eight? That's non zero. So there's. Solution, but wait, but what does that mean? And then six times seventeen or whatever is the determinant of the entire matrix. But then
Oh, okay, I get it now. So... If it turned out that, like, say, C was linearly independent on A and B, then I would end up with, like... Okay, yeah, I get it. So a non-zero determinant means they're linearly independent. Okay. I get it. Alright. Well, is this supposed to go all, all the way out and solve? Do the Gaussian, Gaussian elimination? I don't even know. Is that an assumption that's okay to make? Non-zero determinant, linearly independent. That means you can solve A, B, C equals zero uniquely. Oh. But I also have to go to the extra stuff to prove me that I The only way for it to be... I also have to go the extra step of showing that it only has the trivial solution. Right? So just calculating the determinant isn't enough? Wait, it's enough if you're determining linear independence? Oh. Why is this book telling me to go through all this effort? I guess if you want to show how it's dependent, you would need to solve it, right? Like, if you take the determinant and then it is zero, then like, if the question then asks you like, okay then, right. Like, what the... An applied thing. Oh. So testing for linear independence, determinant, and Gaussian elimination. Okay. Gotta commit that to memory. Let's do some more. Here's an easy one.
So I just need to check if... Well, that definitely has, well, the determinant of that equals, what, 10 minus 6, 4. So they're linear independ linearly independent, but I guess I should go the extra step of solving it, right? The coefficients. Wait a second. Yeah. That's enough, right? Oh no! <laughs> I'm an idiot. So this is a... Is this enough? Because I'm sure there's some way you could write, subtract out, like whatever. Okay. So that's enough, right? left for the exam. Linear independence, bases, and rank. Oh, so many problems suggested. Wait, did I just do that? Wait a second. I was just doing that. Wait, okay, basis and dimension. A basis for a vector space. On to solve the coefficients, that's part of finding the basis, huh? Okay, let's go straight to some problems, okay. Wait a second, standard basis for... Sorry, one second. Okay, all right. 
Wait, for this, explain why S is not a basis for R2. Why? Is it because you're still only supposed to have... So wait, S is a basis for R2 if it spans R2 and is also linearly independent. Three vectors. I was so wait you can you can determine spanning and linear dependence independence by the determinant right but oh wait so any basis of R2 has two elements so what if you have more than three elements it's not... Oh... So like, spanning sets, it's okay to have more than the necessary amount of vectors, but if you want to write a basis, then you can only have the, the precise amount? Is that it? I hope you're in a better place now. School is rough. But we're all in this together, right? <laughs> Basis means the minimal spanning set. Oh! 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 Mind blown! <laughs> Spanning set has at least, and the linearly independent set of S has the most. Oh. If we didn't restrict it to the minimal set, you could just throw an infinite amount of vectors. I have a lot of regrets too, but I think I'm finally doing what I want to do now too. Oh, ow. So yeah, this one has too many vectors. All right, so that makes sense. So then how about this one? Oh wait, this is another one where... Negative four. Well, that's not linearly dependent, is it? Or lin linearly independent? So it can't be a basis either, right? You would only be able to write the line that's multiples of negative four or five. Hmm. 
Okay. Aren't these just multiples of each other? So they're linearly independent, lin linearly dependent, right? Yes, if you take the determinant of it, you would get like a, not a zero one, so it doesn't span, so it can't be a basis. And that would also. Okay. Okay, well, I think I can get those. What are some harder ones? Determine whether S is a basis for the indicated vector space. So what? Hmm. <sighs> well, they're not multiples of each other. It seems. Right? And then that means it spans or square. Hmm. Could you chat in the in here with a different username? Sorry, but your username is kind of inappropriate, so <laughs> I'm trying to be... I'm trying to have a PG environment because I know a lot of like underage kids watch Puyo R2, sorry, I'm stupid <laughs> So wait, how much does my book expect me to solve for this? I just want to know because, like, taking the determinant is enough in this case, isn't it? Oh. Whatever, I'll just do it.
What is this street in your street? <laughs> it's it's a Ringo appreciation stream. <laughs> so if you know about that Puya lore, Ringo really loves math. So I'm channeling her spiritual energy to try and learn math myself. Usually I'm actually playing Puyo, but um, real life takes precedence towards gaming, unfortunately. Oh, this is so annoying. I hate solving these problems. Maybe I, should, uh, maybe I should switch over to like calculus. Would that be more entertaining? Oh, here's some real problems where I actually have to compute. Okay. I'm taking on more. I'm taking online classes. I'm applying for statistics PhD programs, but they require me to take more math than I actually took when I was in college. You know what? Maybe I'll come back to this later. I'm gonna go pee real quick and then. Um. I'll be back. You know what? Let me make. Sorry, I realized I don't have an intermission screen, so I'm gonna code that real quick. Where is this? I made this as a web page, but that also means that it's not easy for me to edit. Where is? Ah. Uh... Be back soon. Be right back. Okay, wait. Okay, I'm back. Let me open up my math, my calculus book. Oh. 
What was I doing? Homogeneous linear equations. Okay. Was I doing this last time? I don't remember. Did I do this last time? I don't remember it. I took a break and then... Maybe I'll do the even problems. Let me see. One second. Um... Oh, I did do a lot. 13, 15, 17, 19. Okay, well, I still need more practice with this, so... MATLAB, I've heard of that. <laughs> MATLAB is cool. I think th the French community has written some Puyo analysis tools using MATLAB. Yeah, while well, I was making my... Do you want to see what I've been working on in <laughs> Python? I'm trying to like prototype as fast as I can. Um, Just like... Something that will read the screen. What is this? Sorry, one second. Sorry, uh, wait. Let 
Let me comment out this one piece of code. I think I downloaded the loop version of this. Skip it. Sorry, I think I had this working the other day, but then it's not working anymore. Sorry, I was working on this on my other computer, so that's why it wasn't working. Oh wow, that's kind of bad. Oh, maybe. Okay, well, I need to load up Puyo Chronicles for this. Sorry that there was just like a moment of nothing for a while. Um. It's really jittery, but basically, I did. So I had said it earlier to only run this like every like. Okay, well, currently it's just trying to run like every single frame, and analysis of the colors on the screen. So I'm not sure if it'll look very obvious to you right now. <laughs> I should probably like rate limit it or something. Here, let me let me change this. Okay. 
this working still? My next step, I was supposed to code it to like also. So what I'm trying to do after this is, once it reads the screen, it's supposed to. Oh crap! <gasps> I'm about to lose to the CPU. Anyways, once it reads the screen, it's supposed to like check each cell with a test color to see how long the chain is. And then it would output. I don't know if you can really read my crappy matrix on the right. So yeah, there's still more work to do, but I need to complete my stuff for my classes and everything that finished this month. So I don't really have time to work on this until next month. So I'm kind of sad, but my goal for this project is to make like some sort of like screen overlay for commentators so they don't have to spend time counting up the chain themselves. I think that would help for spectators too. Just knowing how long it chain- Because I realized that when like, whenever we're like, whoa, wow, nice harassment, like a normal person, they just see a two chain appearing out of a mess from the whole screen. I think it's hard for people to tell like what a good harassment is or not. So with something that can output the length of a chain for them on the screen, I think it'll be easier for people to understand. So that's my goal. Okay, well that's it. Go back to math. I can't keep messing around. <laughs> oh. Where'd my... Strange. Is my capture card not working? Oh, here it is. Well, the way this program works, it actually, you just need to be able to like capture your gameplay with a capture card or something. Right now, I just have it set to use the, the RGB colors for each Puyo in Puyo Chronicle, but with some adjustment, you could use it to use a different like set of colors to identify each Puyo. And then you can also use that to, well, you would also have to change the screen area too, because the boards are laid out differently in Puyo Tetris, but it could be used for other Puyo games too. Anyways, that's my plan whenever I get time to like actually do what I want. Work has been really tough lately, so I can't do anything. Okay. Problems for the real world time. Totally need this in real life. Let's see. Oh, what the heck? Find a general solution to the given differential equation. Uh, 
Oh, so you could write this of like this form, right? So then you find the roots. Am I doing this correctly? Can't remember how you're supposed to do this. All right, there's no music playing. Oh, do you guys want to hear the playlist I was using for my meme Tetris Effect stream? This is it. <laughs> Dude, the Tetris Effect stream was fun. I look back at my gameplay and like, wow. That's a... Tetris Effect sounds like a cool game, but not being able to see your Tetraminos. I don't know how I would feel about that yet. The auxiliary equation. Oh yeah, okay. So I have to solve the roots for this, right? And then like the general solution would be like some form of like this, right? ERT or something like that. But let's start with this first. Um gosh, I'm so bad at factoring. Can you factor this? How do you factor this? Wait, eight and negative one. Sorry, I'm slow at factoring. It's like the bait of my existence, honestly. Wait. Maybe I should do it this way. So then this is 2R. <laughs> Sorry, I suck. So R equals negative four, or R equals one half, right? So then the general solution would be a linear combination of I don't think it's as asking me to find anything more yet. I would have to find the values of the coefficients if I was given the initial values. Uh, one second. Yeah, I did this correctly. Cool. Okay. 
Oh, whoops. So R squared plus 5R plus 6 is the auxiliary equation. Um, So what this is This isn't right We did this wait Oh gosh wait can this wait How do you factor this again? Wait, I did this correctly, right? So you need a product of 6 and a sum of 5. Yeah, okay. I don't know why I'm getting tripped up on something so basic. So then you factor out R from this, you get R minus 1. <laughs> But then from here you get you don't get the same thing. Hmm. Why am I getting tripped up by something so easy? Oh, <laughs> product of six. Wait, why did they do a negative one? Then how do you get a five? Just kidding. This won't work. I'm so dumb. How do you do this? What is R plus two plus R plus three? Oh, it's two and three. Oh, oh. I'm so dumb. Thank you. Factoring is my weak point in the world of everything that's supposed to be easy for math people. I'm so dumb. I just want to curl up and cry. Is that weird? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why I was so slow on that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so then that would just be Right? Okay, let's solve some initial value problems. This looks like an easy one. Oh, whoops.
So I guess I should get the general form first, right? So. Hey, why did, he, why did I write this part? It's so stupid. Sorry. So this is just... So R equals zero, or R equals one. Or negative one. Oh, almost made a fatal mistake right there. <laughs> okay. kind of zoning out so then the general form is C well negative t right zero t e to the zero that's just one right is this okay solve for the coefficients so the initial value when t equals zero for and then for the derivative of that which is just Negative C, right? That's just... Okay. So then the system I need to solve is... equals negative et and if you plug it back back into here you get c1 plus negative C1 minus ET times E2. But well, doesn't this just equal E to the zero, which is just one? So then. Right? Wait, t equals zero until them both. Oh, 
Oh, wait. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, dumb. I made this more complicated, huh? That was stupid. Thank you for catching that. Right. Zero. So now that's just C2. This is also just negative C2, huh? So then C2 equals... I made this more complicated than it was supposed to be. Oh my god, I hate myself. Why am I doing this? Because they need to study. Okay, let me check if I got this right. Mm. Wait, wait, I'm not, it's not over yet. Oh, I'm stupid. Okay, so once I found out the coefficients, I need to rewrite the real solution equation. So... It was C1... Shoot, my C's are like E's. C1 plus C2. And then this actually equals... If C... If C1 is 3 plus... Minus. Okay. Wait, I don't have. The oh, this whole time I didn't have the current song listed. If you guys want to know, it's this. Product of three, sum a negative four. Negative three times negative one. So then the general solution is...
Okay. Now I need to find the derivatives. Or well. So down here I'll, I'll write the system. So when t0 it equals 1. So c1. Well, e to the 0 anything, that's just 1. But then. Right? So then when t equals 0, that would be c1 plus 3c2 equals 1 third. Alright. So what do I do here? Elimination, 2c2 two equals negative two-thirds. So now c1 minus one-third equals one. C1 equals four thirds. Huh? What kind of computer am I using to draw right on the screen? I have a Lenovo Doga 2 or something. I don't remember what model it is, but it's a touchscreen laptop. And then I'm just sending my screen to my main streaming computer with my capture card. Oh wait, it's not over yet. So I need to substitute these coefficients back in to the general solution. To the solution. So four thirds e t plus her one third. Gosh, I can't wait. I wish we can get 20th anniversary localized. That would be so great. I'm just desperate for anything that's that's in, that lets you actually play Puyo against your friends. Well, if you guys don't know, I think I'm going to DreamHack Atlanta this November. Um, it's like this gaming convention where you stay overnight if you ha if you want to, and just play like have a LAN party or something. I think that's how it works. But I'll have a Puyo set up there with the stream, so it'll be fun. Hopefully people won't hate me too much if I run the setups on Yakuza 6. So I learned a lot about... <laughs> so the thing with running Puyo setups at conventions is just that, like... Unless you're constantly keeping an eye on it, on your setup, there's always that one person who changes the game to like Tetris only. So then you don't have a Puyo setup anymore. Everyone's just only playing Tetris. And you know, you can't just be like, tell people to stop playing because that's rude. <laughs> so, so like my plan at Momocon this year, like a couple months ago, I hosted my Puyo setup using Yakuza 6 instead of Puyo Tetris, so Puyo was the only option. So that was pretty great. But then there was this one person who actually like 
took my display copy that I was standing on the table. They opened it up and took out my Puyo Tetris CD and put it into the PS4 just so they could play Tetris. This all this all happened within the span of like the three minutes I was going to like to the bathroom. So, anyways, DreamHack Atlanta. When I bring my setups there, I'm like gonna stick Yakuza 6 into the CD tray and then like stick like tie up my PS4 with zip ties so it's impossible for them to take the CD out. Because I'm tired of people <laughs> doing that to me. Just want to show people Puyo. If they want to play Tetris that badly, they can just pull out their phones. Isn't this just a R minus three squared? So then I have a double root of R equals three. Now there was a special rule for double roots when it comes to writing the general solution, right? It was for repeated roots. T E R T. Okay. So, wait, initial values. I didn't write those. Write those down. Keep giving me like t equals zero as the initial value, just so it's like less complicated to solve. <laughs> Thank you, book. Anyways, so c one e three c plus c two t e three t. Okay. So then for what? Oh. If the initial value for the first for the general solution is zero, then that means C1 well this T right here makes everything turn zero, so C1 equals two. And then the derivative. So what? Um, I actually have to use the product rule here. Okay, so for this first, wait, what did I put X? This is T. Anyways, three C one E three T. There's that one. Plus C2 E3T plus C2 3C2 E3T, right? Okay. Then the other equation is, well, if t equals zero, then that's just three c one plus c two. Yep, that's it. Equals twenty five over three. So 
So, 6 plus C2 equals 75 over 3. Eh. So then C2 equals... What's 6 times 3? 18. 25 minus 18 is... That. Seven thirds. Okay, let's check if this is right. Oh, here we go, yep. This one could actually be difficult. It's making it writing too small. Here, I'll make it bigger. Okay. Product of four, sum of negative one. Hmm. Do I need to use a quadratic equation for this? <sighs> Product. Okay. Wait a second, I missed the four. God damn it. How do I make such an easy mistake right away? <laughs> I'm just... <sighs> well then, that's... I can factor this. Yep. Totally. Wait a second. That's just... Oh. I forgot. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Don't know why I didn't catch that immediately. Okay, well, anyways. Double root 2. So... General solution is... Okay, now initial values.
Well, T equals one. Hmm. Interesting. Right? Okay, that's one equation. Then the derivative of this is... It's just like this one, right? Let me copy this. Whatever, I'll sit here and do it. Okay, product rule. Wait a second, is this right? How can this be right? Hmm. I think that's okay. All right. So then my two equations are Wait a second.
I guess you could simplify this a little bit more to... I got it! Okay. Okay, what can you do next? Okay, I think the next chapter is Auxiliary Equations with Complex Roots. Oh, McLaren series. Ah, I can't do this. Okay, I'll just get that and go straight to a problem and then hope I can figure it out. <laughs> look it up as I go. <laughs> more later. Don't know. Uh, oh no. Wait, this is an R, that's just one. My bad. So R squared equals squared R. God dang it. R equals square root of negative one. Interesting. And then the general solution for this is, what is it? Oh crap, where am I? <sighs> no, I think the McLear McLaren series was part of like the proof, but then... The two linearly independent solutions are E alpha t cosine beta t d. So wait. If your root is in the form then wait. Then two linearly independent solutions are E alpha Just negative one. 
so alpha equals zero, beta equals one. So really I just have C1 cosine T plus C2 sine T. That's it. Huh? This isn't the most effective studying method. Oh. Well. Either way, it just comes down to trying, right? So, I'll do my best. I'm really hungry, but I have no food in my house, so like... Maybe if I keep doing math problems, I'll forget about how hungry I am. Mm. Mm, I'm tired. <laughs> okay, what is this? What is this? What is this? Something tells me this can't be factor. Oh my god. <laughs> what is this? Everything in life sucks. Okay, what was the quadratic equation even? Negative b plus or minus square root of... B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Sorry, I'm actually that much of a noob at math. I don't have the quadratic equation memorized. Complete the square, subtract 1 from both sides. What does that mean? Oh. That's what you mean. Complete the square, you mean like right like this? Hmm. 
I might opt for this if I don't have like a calculator on hand. Okay, so that's what I have it in the form of. So then the general solution is... E... Five... Cosine T plus... Right? Arbitrary constants? What do you mean? What arbitrary constants? Oh crap! Ah, ah, everything. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I have to remember that when it comes to the exam time. If I forget that, then that's a lot of points taken off, right? Okay. <laughs> so I can complete the square for this one too, right? So what is this? R squared minus... I, right? Because square root of negative three I have to get this email. Okay. Okay, and then, so then the general solution, okay, not gonna forget my constants this time. E to the 2t cosine square root of t, or 2 square root of 3. Okay, I got that right. Next one. Hmm. 
Okay, now it just has to continue finding a general solution. Can this even be... Ringo is teaching us how to solve real life problems. So the general solution for this is... Oh no, my pen's disappeared, which means my note is glitching out because I've been using it for too long. Should probably like restart my computer or take a break or something. I don't want to though. I want to keep studying. Whatever, let's do a couple more, then I'll go get something to eat. Then I'll probably be back later trying to do more practice problems. Okay. C1 e to the negative 2 cosine 2t. Oh, wait, I forgot the T here. Oh, fatal mistake! Can't keep doing that. Huh? But, you know how every, like, battle anime always has to have the school arc? Where it's just like constant exposition for how the world works and stuff. And the main character is always someone stupid who doesn't know anything. Who lived under a rock. That's me. This just r squared plus 10 r plus 25 equals 0 r plus 5 squared plus 0 so it's double root r equals negative 5 okay So then the general solution is the other one where it's c1 e negative 5 t plus c2 t e negative 5 t. Ok. 
Okay. Product of five, sum of two. That's not possible. So this is another one where I have to complete the square, right? equals 2i so r equals Divide the two coefficient by what? It says one is less than five. The constant coefficient, the quadratic has complex roots. Oh, I remember hearing about this in like middle school. Divide by two and square it. But wait, why two? Why are you divide by two? How much is the DLC? Hmm. Free? There's lots of free resources to learn math online. Well, I'll just keep going. C1, E, cosine, 2T, here we go. Oh, B squared minus 4AC. <laughs> oh. 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 Mind blown. I'll have to keep that in mind next time. Hmm. 
41. Where is these numbers coming from? Okay. R squared plus 10R plus 41 equals zero. Should I just complete the square again? Do I have to keep doing that? What is this? Is 41 even like, isn't that a prime number? Yeah. What's 41 minus 25? That's plus or minus what negative six in the square root of negative 16. That's pull out a four, so four i. One thing I've realized on math tests, oh, okay, I don't know if you were part of my stream earlier where I was talking about how I got through school on test taking ability instead of like actual skills. I did notice on math tests that they usually give you like some, like somehow it always will magically simplify to something like clean because like the t question writers themselves don't want something to be like obscenely annoying for them to grade. So like, I realized like, uh, as I work through the problem, if it ends up looking really stupid looking, then it's probably like I messed up somewhere. So that's how I usually approach math tests with my limited studying. <sighs> okay. One more, and then I think, how do I, find the initial values with like complex whatever let's get to that one solve the initial value problem do 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 plus two y did i forget the t oh my god Ah! Oh wait. T. Okay, R squared plus two R plus two equals zero. Product of two or sum of two. That's not possible, is it? Initial values. Hmm. 
Okay. So, general solution. C2, E, negative T, sine T. And then, okay, substitute initial values. C1, cosine of 0 is just 1, right? Plus sine of 0, though. That's 0. So really that's just C1 equals 2. Oh, but now I need the derivative. Ooh, this is annoying. I have to use the prod rule in both of them. Okay, one step at a time. Looking at this makes me feel like I messed up somewhere. Okay, y of zero when t equals zero. Find is zero, so that's this term is out. That one's in e to the zero is just one. And then the second term is just... <laughs> wow. They made this one really nice, right? Is this it? Because these two are out because they have signs. So then it's just c1, negative c1. C2, okay. So C1 equals 2, and then negative C1 plus C2 equals 1. And negative 2, 3. Okay. 
I got it right! Okay, I can do the next one. Well, I'm glad you guys showed me the whole completing the square stuff. That's so much faster than writing out the whole different... The whole, um, what was the quadratic equation? Wait! Oh! Ah. I'm so angry. I just want to break something. From moping is over. Next problem. Oh, they even made this one nice too. R squared plus two R plus seventeen equals zero. Wait, wait. Initial values. Gotta copy that down. One. Negative one. Then the general solution here is Oh, this one's annoying because I have to be careful about differentiating the, the, the cosines and sines because they have a comp like a scalar inside of them. Well, I'll worry about that in a bit. Let's do the easy one so I can feel good about myself. <laughs> so C1 equals 1. Alright, half solved! Okay. Now I need the derivative of this ridiculous thing. So... My T's a little crap. So wait, cosine 4t, the derivative is that is negative 4 sine 4t, right? I mean, I guess this term doesn't matter in the end anyways, given the initial value.
Okay. Now for differentiating the C2 A2 negative T sine 4 T. That's plus or Oh, sorry, cosine minus C2 Okay, so then Y Huh? Don't I get the same thing again? Cosine 4 times 0, that's just cosine of 0, which is just 1, C1. Oh. And then... Okay, interesting. So if C1 equals 1, negative 1, well, yeah, negative 1. Zero. Really? This is it. Oh, yep, it is. Okay. Well, it's time for me to go eat, so... I guess I'll be going now. Got more studying to do all day tonight. Keep, keep going. I can do this though. You guys have helped me a lot. I've learned a lot. Like, knowing about seeing the square is something I, I know I learned it, but I had just totally forgotten about it. But it's much faster than trying to do the trying to do the quadratic equation all the time. So that's helped me a lot. I think I have more confidence now. So, thank you. Um, I don't know if I'll stream again later. Don't really want to trouble you guys. Also, math's boring for most people who are following my channel, so... <gasps> I just see this as like a meme, mostly. But then I have really like amazing people like you guys come in and solve it for me. And I'm just like, wow, I learned something new. <sighs> Pass the exams. Thank you, Wingman. I'll try. Once this is over, I can go back to my Puyo life. Probably. Maybe. Thank you. Well, have a good one, guys.